equality, freedom, marriage. These are the rights of every community. And even more specifically, the business community. Welcome to Ms. Mojo. And today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 hilariously cringy Schitt's Creek scenes. Did you wet the bed? He's holding on to her so she doesn't fall into the creek. Look a little closer, Ray. Could you yes. spare yeah. some, uh, yeah. oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. For this list, we're looking at the best scenes from this beloved show that made us laugh and wince at the same time. If we missed your favorite cringeworthy moment, let us know in the comments below. Number 10, David's Nighttime Oopsie Daisy. What is that? Well, it's what? It's something spilled. What? Something spilled in the bed. If we're being honest with ourselves, we've all had nighttime oopsie daisies. They just probably didn't happen when we were in our mid 30s. Although, no judgment if it did. What is it? Nothing. Is it you? What happened? Nothing! In this Shit's Creek episode, David wets the bed he shares with Patrick. Oh my god, David. Did you wet the bed? No. Apparently, this is something that used to happen when he was a kid if he was excited about something which he is as his and Patrick's nuptials loom closer. Why am I oddly flattered? The situation is cringy because it's embarrassing, but also because of how nonchalant Patrick tries to be about the whole thing. Just get in the shower. I will deal with this. Just let, let me do that for you. And I gotta probably get these sheets in the wash sooner than later. The combination of David's mortification and Patrick's support make for the perfect awkward moment. To make matters worse, Moira broadcasts the aftermath all over social media. You didn't stop recording. So people basically got like a whole podcast about how David's wetting the bed again. If I wasn't your publicist, I would be enjoying the situation a lot more than I am. Thanks, Mom. Oh, dear. Number nine, Ted kisses David during Spin the Bottle. All right, what is the game? Because I'm up. Before David and Patrick bought a house at the end of the series, Patrick threw a housewarming party at his apartment and things got slightly out of hand. Or if we're being honest, Ted gets slightly out of hand. Ted, can I get you a party shot? Cool. Sweet, sweet Ted decides this is his night to let loose, and cringiness ensues. Respin! Yeah, it actually looks like it sort of landed between two people. No, 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 no. I know exactly who Ooh, it landed it on. Oh, Ted, that's not okay. Hey, come here, big guy! During Spin the Bottle, drunk Ted kisses David, leaving Alexis and Patrick less than enthused. Looks like the punch needs a refill. Oh, hey, I could use a refill too, big guy. Okay, I don't know where the big guy is coming from, but it has to stop. The cringe factor from this whole ordeal may start with Ted's drunken shenanigans, but it far from ends there. David tells Alexis and Patrick that if it would make them feel better, they can kiss. You know, so things are even. They do, and create one of the most awkward kisses that's ever graced the screen. Yikes. Yum. Number 8. Moira Gets Mixed Up I'm hoping I might persuade you to put your weight behind me. Political weight. We know Moira has a way with words and is no stranger to making things up as she goes. Her winery moment and the infamous fold in the cheese moment are more than emblematic of that. Uh -huh. You just fold it in. Okay, I don't know how to fold broken cheese like that. And I don't know how to be any clearer. But this moment takes the cake. Equality, freedom, marriage. These are the rights of every community. When Moira runs for town council against Jocelyn, Ronnie lets it slip that she's part of a key demographic that hasn't backed a candidate yet. Here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna invite some of my girlfriends over, and if you can get on the good side of these women, let's just say you'd be locking down a key demographic. Moira assumes Ronnie means lesbians, but she is wrong. Ronnie. When you mentioned earlier that I might lock down a key demographic this evening, you meant what? Entrepreneurs. Everyone here is a member of the Women's Business Association. The demographic in question is women in business. Moira has to make some on-the-spot speech changes and ends up saying things like, You did not choose this life. No, each one of you was born to be an entrepreneur. Talk about awkward. One of my top priorities will be to to change people's misguided and ignorant perceptions of women like you. Number seven, David leaves too many voicemails for Patrick. Okay, ciao. Ciao, I said ciao. Hey, who hasn't left an embarrassing voicemail? 
or two, or seven. If we're being honest, David might have gone a little overboard here. David meets Patrick when he's filing for incorporation papers for his new business, and the two have instant chemistry. It's nice to meet you, David. Yeah. So, when Patrick tells David that he needs to work on his business plan, David takes that to heart. Maybe a little too much. Hi, David, it's Patrick. I, um, was just calling to run my business plan. Uh, buy you in a little more detail. He leaves Patrick a series of voicemails, each one wordier and cringier than the last. Hi, Patrick. Yeah, I think I, I think I called you David. Which, that's not, that's not your name. Don't beat yourself up too much, David. If all those embarrassing voicemails were necessary to get us to the simply the best moment, it was worth it. You're simply the best. Better than all the rest. Number six, the Schitt's Creek sign. That is my great-grandfather up there. Horace Shit. He was a visionary, Johnny. He discovered this land, he developed it, and he turned it into the little slice of heaven that it is. Ah, the infamous Schitt's Creek sign. This sign is one of the many things that would cause a traveler to make the town a travel destination. Who could forget Moira's stupendous tourism video? But the scene where it's introduced is hilariously awkward. What the hell is this? The town sign. Is this the real sign or the joke sign? What do you mean? You don't see anything wrong with this? The sign, which features a man standing behind a woman in a very suggestive position, leaves Johnny disturbed. But Ray doesn't see anything wrong with it. He's holding on to her so she doesn't fall into the creek. He also adds that the sign is very popular, and people come from all over to see it. I'll bet they do! Yeah, we're thinking those reasons might not be so clean-cut, Ray. You got it all wrong, pal. Let me enlighten you, Mr. Johnny Rose. That isn't even Horace's wife. That's his sister. Number five, Moira sings at Carl's funeral. Listen, Moira is clearly a scene stealer. On the first day of Christmas, my true love gave to me the keys to a Lamborghini. An actress in every sense of the word, she loves being the center of attention and will take any chance she gets, even if it's her son's wedding. But here she takes one for the team, the team being Johnny in this case. When Bob's brother Carl dies, Johnny somehow gets roped into giving a speech despite the fact that he doesn't know who Carl is. I don't know Carl. We barely know Bob. As Johnny's speech starts tanking, Moira steps in with the save, but in an equally gringy manner. Here, in this godforsaken... Oh, Danny boy. She gives a rousing rendition of Danny boy, and once again, steals the show. From Number four, when Moira and Roland wake up together. I want to see the look on your face when you walk into your first regional association of municipalities conference. And there it is. Moira and Roland attending a municipalities conference together. What could go wrong? Turns out a lot. Hey, Johnny! <laughs> He's Roland! Hey, we're all here at Rampka. You should be here. Mary something is here. Gavin's here. The road salt guy. Yeah, okay, Roland. The two end up getting raucously drunk, and after blacking out, wake up in the same bed. While neither of them has any memory of what happened the night before, Roland's naked, so they both assume the worst. Moira? It's cringy because we don't want to see either of these characters cheat on their significant others. But it's also wildly hysterical when Moira starts screaming at the top of her lungs. Oh. Ah! Roland! What are you doing in my room? Luckily, everything ends up all right, but we will not forget this uncomfortable moment for a long time. Welcome to ramp. <laughs> oh no. Number three, the dinner party. Matt was having a bad day today, so we talked about that. You didn't tell me you're having a bad day. Put your hand up if you've ever been to a dinner party where pretty much everyone at the table has slept with at least one other person, or maybe two particularly if you're anyone who was invited to this particular party. In this scene, David, Stevie, Ted, Alexis, Mutt, and Twyla have dinner, and things are awkward. Stevie, how long have you and David been, um... It's very fresh. And no, it's not. Uh, it is, I would say. Mm -mm. Mm. So, everyone knows? Stevie and David are worried people will find out they've slept together. Mutt and Alexis are having a hard time hiding their mutual attraction. It's just all bad. I don't know why you didn't feel comfortable talking to me about it. It's this not as important. So. That's why I was talking to Alexis about it. Stevie! A lot of what makes this entry so cringeworthy is that it's so relatable. Dinner parties are always awkward. 
but this specific group of people makes it that much funnier. Sorry, I, I thought everyone knew. Number two, David walks in on his parents. David, what you just saw was your mother and me I, I know what I having saw. an I intimate moment. Unsee that. When you're sharing a motel with your family and living right next door to your parents, things are bound to feel cramped. There are plenty of awkward family moments for the Roses that stem from their living situation, from the debate over beds to Moira walking in on David's post-coitus morning after. Hello. But nothing tops David walking in on his parents engaging in the primal act. David is mortified, and who wouldn't be? Shame on you. Shame on you for attempting that position at 8 uh. o'clock in the morning. But what really takes this scene over the edge is what comes next. An embarrassed Moira and Johnny try to give David and Alexis the talk. This is bad enough when you're a teen, but it's downright awful as an adult. Ew. I'm gonna vomit on this floor right now. Before we unveil our top pick, here are some honorable mentions. Moira's audition for Jazzagals. It should not have been you, Moira. Someone helped me all that long. It should have been you. Someone's arms were big and strong. It should have been you. Alexis and Ted attempt dirty talk. Ted's not great at this. I'm sorry that I'm late. My grandmother passed this morning. Ew. Jake coming to the motel to see Stevie, not David. He wanted to have his cake and eat it too. Oh. Okay, um, so you weren't here for me today. Okay. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, a little bit of Lexus. I have chosen to perform the title track off of my critically reviewed limited reality series, A Little Bit of Lexus. Ooh. Feel free to sing along if you know the words. Okay. Are you a Lamborghini? Are you a Hollywood star? Do you get where we're going with this? I'm a Lamborghini. I'm a Hollywood star. I'm a little bit tipsy when I drive my car. Based on Alexis's strange stories about her past exploits, it's not hard to believe she once had a short-lived reality show about her life. I'm expensive sushi. I'm a cute, huge yacht. I'm a little bit single, even when I'm not. What is hard to believe is just how bad the theme song is, and how bad Alexis is when she performs it. She uses the theme song A Little Bit of Lexus to audition for the role of Sally Bowles, and it's truly astounding how hilariously horrible it is. I'm a little bit of la 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 la. A little bit of Lexus. La 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 la. Oh, a little wow. bit of Lexus. Okay. The choreo, the lyrics, all of it reaches the pinnacle of cringe. But is it just us, or is this song really catchy? Are you saying I booked it? Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.